Hi there. My name's Mary. I'm the director of youth services at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And I'm here today to continue reading Spunky Tells All by Ann Cameron. The pictures are by Lauren Castillo. And it was published by Farrah strauss Cheru in 2011. When we left the family last time, they were talking about getting a cat in order for Spunky to have a companion. Spunky is not pleased with this idea. So let's find out what happens. Barley. We all got in the car. Ralph driving. Huey and Julian in the back. Me in the front seat, next to Michelle. I stuck my head out the window and smelled all the swirling message smells of the great wild blue yonder and gave my own rich smells as a gift to the world. That is a dog's main work. But they wouldn't let me concentrate on it. They didn't have enough understanding and respect. They had to talk to me. Spunky, Julian said. Guess what? We're going to let you help pick a cat. I didn't even pull my head back in the window. For a barbecue? Listen to that. Yer, if he really wants a cat, Julian said. For a cat barbecue, I said. Cat with Tamale sauce. He sounds as if he doesn't want a cat, Huey said. To me, Julian said, it sounds as if he wants one very much. Right you both are, I said. But all they understood was your Ralph parked the car. Spunky Michelle said, here we go. She put my leash on, a yellow one. We were at an animal shelter hotel. We all went in through a blue and red door, then down a hall, first into a room filled with big cages with dogs in them, some hoping to be adopted and some not, and all creating many rich smells. Brother smells, sister smells, an enemy smell from a massive bulldog with a square smushed in face who the second he smelled me made a deep kill you noise in his throat and stood up on his hind legs glaring at me with eyes like burning buttons. That was not friendly. I met his gaze sternly. I didn't wag my tail or lower it either. A tail is like a flag. You don't lower it before the enemy. A woman came out of the next room. Oh, don't worry about Barley, she said gaily. He doesn't mean it. My dear lady, I said, I can smell him. You couldn't be more wrong. Barley's a wonderful dog, the woman said. But so far, no one wants to take him home. Maybe you all would. That canine calamity? Are you joking? I said. He has the look of a fine guard dog, Ralph said. How could Ralph be so ignorant? How could a good man mistake brutality for power? I am a fine guard dog, I told him. Maybe one day I will ask our burglar to the house just so I can prove it. On the other hand, maybe. Barley, a serious dog, Ralph said. What do you think, boys, Michelle said. Julian shrugged. Huey copied him and shrugged, too. We dogs don't shrug. 
We think it's a big mistake to be a species that shrugs. Whatever is usually what a human shrug means. A dangerous word. If you want to survive, you must pay attention to what's coming down the road straight at you and say yes to it or no to it, but never, whatever. No, I yerfed. Ralph, Michelle, I take it back. What I said about cats, cats and barbecues, that was nasty of me. Forget it. Yes, I used to be a carnivore. But if you got a cat, I could, I would become a vegetarian. Kill you once, kill you twice. Kill you three times, Barley said. Ralph, Michelle, I like cats so much. Cats are great. I love it that their growls are tiny, and so are they. I want one, I really do. Spunky, be quiet, Michelle said. Ralph, no second dog. How I adore adored her in that scary moment, adored her so very, very much. Foolish. We trotted into the next room where there were many more cages, small ones, two levels of them, and a cat in every cage, and a smell of so many different kinds of cats, it made me dizzy. Tidy cats that smelled like Michelle's sewing kit. Big one, almost as big as me, that smelled like bears. And skinny ones that smelled of lightning and claws freshly sharpened. When they saw me, all the cats stood up in their cages and flashed their tails back and forth like car windshield wipers. In dog, that would have meant, like you a lot. In cat, it didn't mean that at all. It meant the opposite. I don't understand why there are so many languages in the world, and all so different. Huey and Julian ran around to each cage, sticking their fingers through the wires and getting them cat licked and saying, cute, cute, cute. I could smell a lot of things about those cats, where they'd come from, what adventures they'd had, their hopes and happiness and disappointments too. Huey and Julian stopped to look at a small white cat who stuck one front paw out between the bars of the cage as if she wanted to shake hands with Julian. A friendly one, Julian said. He tried to touch her paw, but she pulled it back into the cage and used it to bat at the black spot on the end of her tail, which she chased round and round until she caught it and collapsed on top of it. I sniffed fumes of electric fur and burning curiosity and vanity run wild, and beyond all that, a dangerous waiting calm like the stillness at a hurricane center. She's got energy, Huey said. How cute, Julian said. Don't be misled, I said. She'll be cataleptic, or maybe a catapult. A cat acrobat is not what you want. Hush, Bunky, you'll scare her. Huey said. He and Julian kept staring at the cat and saying sweet things to her while I sneezed and scented all the fibers of her silly, fine fur. Together, what did they add up to? A very strong smell of foolish. I spoke to her in dog cat, our limited common language. Who are you anyway? I asked, figuring 
She might be too young or too scatterbrained to know. She sat up, curling her tail around herself and answered in time. I'm very young. I am purebred. I am darling. I am Dazzle. I am Balinese. I live by two mottos, better bad than bored. And anything you can think of, try it. Don't just think, reflect, I urged. She said. She had no idea what reflect meant. There was no use saying another word to her. Through the bars in her cage, Julian and Huey took turns rubbing her neck with one finger. Huey said, Julian, don't you think this one's the coolest? Absolutely, Huey said. I pushed myself between them and the cage so they had to stand back a little. I tried to reason with them. I tried to warn them. You don't want that one, not her. Never take home a cat that smells so foolish, they ignored me. Mom, Dad, we like this white one best, Julian said. Huey said, and see how Spunky's pushing in close. He wants her too. Me and the Bates family, together, Yet we can't speak the same language. It's a tragedy. Half an hour later, they had signed the papers. They had adopted her. She was in the car, going home with us. They had already given her a name. Fiona. Fiona sat in the back of the car in Julian's and Huey's lap, tickling her chin with her tail, telling them she loved them and distracting me from smelling anything new out the window. A. F. I've never caused any trouble to the Bates family. I'm an older dog, a considerate dog. I always followed a daily routine. I like to go on walks with my family knowing they were thinking about no one but me. I liked my bowl with my food in it, which always sat in exactly the same place and was just for me. I liked my water bowl, which was mine alone and sat by my food bowl. I liked my nap. I liked my dreams. I liked my thoughts. I liked to live in peace. That was my old life. My life BF before Fiona. That first day when we got home from the animal shelter hotel, Fiona yelled down. Julian set her on the floor of the kitchen and she ran through all the rooms of the house as fast as she could. She knocked into my food bowl and spilled the food out of it. She knocked into my water bowl and splashed all the water out. She bolted for the family lie around room and knocked over a vase of roses and a tree of umbrellas. Don't chase her, Michelle said. We weren't chasing her. We were just trying to keep up, all saying no in our own ways. A simple quirk. But Fiona didn't listen. She ran into a closet in the family lie around room and hid behind the ironing board in the mop. Ralph tried to catch her, but just when he said, gotcha, the ironing board fell on his head and she slipped out of his hands and out of the closet and climbed the curtain on the tallest window and hung by her claws, swaying and crying 
What have you done to me? I could see that she liked to climb, but she was afraid of heights. I stood below her and said quietly, reflect. If you don't like heights, don't climb. She looked down at me and hissed. Bring a big towel, Huey, Ralph said. Julian, bring the tall ladder. They did. Ralph climbed the ladder. Fiona saw him coming and stretched out her claws, but he dodged them and threw the towel over her and got her all wrapped up. He climbed down the ladder one-handed. Fiona, in the towel, raised high above his head, yowling. I am not a packet at the top of her lungs. It's too bad Ralph never worked in a circus. I could see from the way he carried Fiona down that he'd have been a very good at it, I thought. Ralph, if our lives had been different, you and I could have had a circus dog and human act together and traveled the world without Fiona, of course. But there was Fiona twisting and trying to do somersaults inside the towel, and Ralph missing a step in the ladder and parachuting down onto the sofa, and Fiona setting her claws into his knees through the towel, and Ralph howling, this cat can go back where she came from. Right you are, I said, but everybody else crowded around to sit next to them on the sofa, pleading, oh no, she was not going back, no matter what Ralph and I wanted. Julian and Huey and Mich Michelle reached out to pet Fiona through the towel, stroking her gently for what seemed like at least a week in dog time until finally she let herself enjoy it and stretched out on Ralph's belly and rubbed him under his chin with the top of her white head. I waited for him to say, down, cat, and shove her to the floor, but he didn't. He lifted his chin higher so she could rub more, and he purred. Ralph purred just like a cat. And then Julian and Huey grinned and imitated him. They purred. It was a terrible thing to hear and not human at all. I yearned to tell Ralph and everybody how I felt, how I wouldn't be able to stand to live in the Bates home if my humans were going to start acting like cats. And Fiona raised her head and said, Dog, what's your problem? The way cats act is the very best way to act. I yearned again to answer her, to say, but I didn't remember now what I was going to tell her. Because Michelle shushed me and told me I was being too loud. And Ralph put his hands over Fiona's ears and said, Spunky, you must never hurt Fiona or scare her. A new rule. The beginning of my life, A.F. After Fiona. Huey got off the couch, sat down on the floor, and put me on his stomach and petted me on the back and behind my ears. He was still my boy. Spunky's jealous, he said. He was completely wrong about that. I was not at all jealous. It just upset me to hear a grown up human, my dignified friend Ralph, purring like a cat. What if he started acting like a cat all the time? What if the rest of them did? Even Michelle, who would fill my food bowl, who would fill my water bowl. 
the whole family would collapse. Then, what? Where would I go? No matter. I'd go. I'd take my yellow leash with me. I'd carry it in my mouth and look for a new family somewhere, a family that loved dogs, a family without cats, a family with very severe cat allergies. No time like the present. My yellow leash was hanging on the doorknob, the door itself, the way to the outside, to the great wide world hung open. All I had to do was stand up and go. All I had to do was leave Huey, leave Julia, Michelle, and Ralph. I could do it. I could leave them. I could, but I couldn't. If I did, I would be a dog with a broken other animals, snakes for instance, or cats, can live just fine with broken hearts. They don't even notice. Hearts are not essential organs to them. Dogs are different. We care. We can't help it. It's our nature. Fiona was flicking her tail under Ralph's ear and purring again. Ralph was purring. Then Julian purred and Huey. Even though he still sat holding me. And Michelle, even while she stared up at the rip in the curtain, she purred too. If only they'd brought barley home. We'd have it out. We'd have had it out, dog to dog. And one of us would have lived. And one of us would have died. And everything would have been simple. Messy, bloody for sure, but simple. And soon over. Life AF might go on for a very long time. And that's where we'll stop today. And we'll continue at to see how life with Fiona, Spunky, and the rest of the Bates family goes. This is Spunky Tells All by Ann Cameron. It, the pictures are by Lauren. Castillo. It was published by Farrah Strides Drew in 2011. And so I hope you're able to come and join us again when we continue our story. My name is Mary. I'm the director of youth services at the Portland Public Library in Portland, Maine. And until next time, bye-bye.